Tons of people say that Bitcoin's a scam. The whole crypto industry is a scam. Just look at some of these people who think exactly that. The Securities and Exchange Commission sued Binance saying that it was operating an illegal securities exchange in the U.S. The SEC now filing suit against Coinbase. If you told me you owned all of the Bitcoin in the world and you offered it to me for $25, I wouldn't take it because what would I do with it? And these people aren't dumb, right? They're industry leaders, they're veterans of the traditional financial world. In other words, they're saying that crypto is one massive Ponzi scheme. Essentially, crypto companies take your money and run with it. They keep on paying you back a little bit more than you originally put in, and then boom, like that, they vanish. So, if you listen to those people who say that crypto is a scam, is that really true? The truth is always much more nuanced than that. So let's see how exactly crypto companies or Web3 companies actually make money. And I'm going to explain it so simply that even your grandma could understand it. And there are basically two ways that crypto companies or Web3 companies or protocols, however you want to call them, make money. Number one, through transaction fees. And number two, through usage fees. The first one is basically the way that blockchains like Ethereum or Solana make money. Every time that you use the blockchain, for example, you send one ETH or one Bitcoin or one soul to another person, they take a small transaction fee. So for example, if you're sending $10 worth of ETH on the Ethereum blockchain, they'll take maybe a couple of cents transaction fee, or at least that's how it's meant to work if gas fees aren't extremely high. In reality, on blockchains like Ethereum, which are very congested, it can cost upwards of $10, $30, we've even seen gas fees rise as high as hundreds of dollars. So that's basically how they make money. And Ethereum makes a lot of money from transaction fees. Imagine that they take even just a $10 transaction fee on everything that goes through, or even just a dollar transaction, or even just a couple of cents like Solana does, that adds up. If you have millions of people each paying a dollar or even a cent, you can imagine how quickly all of that stacks up. And so it's not really a Ponzi scheme when you look at blockchains, right? Or at least if it's a legitimate blockchain. If you look at something like Ethereum, it does generate real revenue. So those people who we saw earlier who said that there's no intrinsic value underlying it, well, that's not entirely true, right? These blockchains are actually generating real revenue. And the second model is something that we see in Web2 all the time. It's usage fees. Apps or dApps rather, like Uniswap, charge again a small fee on every transaction that you make. So let's say that you want to convert your Ethereum into another token, right? Let's say you're converting your ETH into the token of Aave, which is another DeFi protocol, or you're converting it into the native token of Uniswap. Uniswap will take a small transaction fee on that and it will give you what you asked for. So just like your stockbroker might take a small fee when you make a trade, so too dApps like Uniswap will take a small fee when you use them. In Uniswap's case, it's making a trade. In other dApps cases, it might be doing a particular action. So that's literally all there is to it. These dApps do make real money. Apps like Uniswap has generated billions of dollars in fees for the people who actually provide liquidity. And they've also generated a ton of money in revenue for the actual protocol themselves. So that is why these blockchains and these dApps don't just make money by selling you stuff and by collecting your money and then giving you a little bit. They're not just Ponzi schemes. Now, there is, of course, a slightly murkier side, and there are two other ways that crypto companies or Web3 companies make money. Number one, through token sales, and number two, through NFTs. Now, the reason that I say that these are slightly murkier is because companies in Web3 are not meant to make money through selling tokens or selling NFTs. Token or NFT sales are really there so that the project can raise initial funding Think of it sort of like raising a public VC round or going public. You're meant to be using that money to invest in the company so that you can generate revenue, but you can't really count token sales or NFT sales as actual revenue generation itself. But the reason that it's so murky is because the line gets very blurry between doing something which is legitimate. So for example, actually selling an NFT collection so that you can reinvest it into making really good art 
and maybe even hosting events as projects such as Board Ape Yacht Club do. But then you also have on the flip side, very famous examples of NFT scams. Probably one of the most famous is Logan Paul's NFT scam, where he essentially sold millions of dollars worth of NFTs to his fans and then didn't actually do anything in return. So the game that he was meant to be developing called Crypto Zoos never actually got developed and nothing basically happened. I mean, the story is pretty long and you can go check out Copy Seller's great video on that. But something happened with the developers. Anyway, Logan Paul says that he had nothing to do with it and it was developers who ran away with the money. The point is though that NFT sales in this case were not used to actually legitimately fund a great project and help it succeed. So that's why NFT sales or token sales aren't actually the way that you generate money as a Web3 company. The way that you really generate money is not so different to a Web2 company in the sense that at the end of the day, you need to have real people using your product. And if they do, you make money. So that's really it. You use them and you pay a small fee. If you've been watching carefully, you might also be wondering why I didn't talk about companies like Binance or Coinbase, which are big centralized exchanges. And that's because I don't really call them Web3 companies. They are very much Web2. They are very simple Web2 models where, again, they have a transaction fee, but they are really just Web2 models. The only difference is that they deal with Web3 stuff namely tokens or NFTs. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful and that now you can even explain how Web3 companies make money to your grandma. If you found it helpful, please do drop a like, share it with a friend and leave a comment on what you want me to make the next video on. I read every single comment and you know what? I will make a personalized video on the most popular comment on this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.